support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to the show. That show yesterday was pretty damn good. It was kind of fun getting away from, you know, the daily grind, if you will. Uh, great questions that you guys submitted. I really appreciate you guys getting involved in the show. I want to give a shout out to Bob Hoffman, man. Thanks for that donation. Goes right back into the show. Really appreciate that, man. It was surprising and it was rocking, man. Uh, don't forget before we get going, uh, a lot of people have been asking me, do you got anything other than white in a support store? Yes, there's all kinds of colors. All you have to do is is click on the picture of what you want to get and then go ahead and pick black whatever it is but there is a lot of other colors in there that uh, ain't just featured on the thing but that new store is rocking I really appreciate the support uh, with you guys getting the support gear it's awesome knowing that you're gonna have insane throttle biker news is uh, clothing and the rock online uh, out there in the public showing your support uh, great stuff man great stuff today I am going to be covering the Hells Angels pagan thing that uh, happened out in the Bronx. I know a lot of people were putting on yesterday's segment while I was doing the question and answering stuff. Why ain't you covering? Well, you know, again, I got away from the mix for one day, man. Everybody's on me. So, you know, that answers the question about the why I do biker news, man. People just want to hear the news. So, uh, you know, and, another, and uh, wait till you see the first story, man. Have you guys ever heard of a drive through stripper joint? Well, you're going to see one. <laughs> that is one of the best ideals I have ever heard of. You know, maybe. Maybe we uh, should get together and do a drive-in uh, or drive-through uh, strip club. Anyway, another thing, you know, that was very interesting that came out of the state of Illinois. Our fat boy, J.B. Prick, sir, as I call him, he has asked everybody to start ratting on people not wearing masks. Yes, he's encouraging people to squeal on you family neighbors the whole nine yards and you know what's interesting about that uh it's in the bible you know me i believe in the old man upstairs not saying that you guys have to but i believe in the old man upstairs and in the bible it says you know brother will turn against brother father against son all that type of stuff and boy is it being shepherded in right now but yeah they actually said we want you to report people what kind of crazy crap is that? You know, this generation is so screwed up. They think it's all right to rat on people or squeal or tell on somebody like they're freaking children. How the hell the people look at themselves in the mirror? Uh, one of the things that really bugs me, I think, uh, doing the show is when I cover a story and you see somebody ratting somebody out because they want to get a lesser term or they want to get out of their sentence. And it's like, what did you get in the game for in the first place, man? Uh, you know, when you were out doing your game and stuff, acting all tough or getting, uh, you know, noticed by the girls for wearing this or wearing that, it was all okay. But when the piper came calling, man, to pay that bill, you went out there and just dishonored yourself and your whole family by ratting. I think that really bugs the hell out of me and it should bug the hell out of you guys too you know everybody knows i got a son he's uh doing some big time right now and he, what was so awesome you know during the trial the court and all that stuff he never once never once ratted on anybody else that was involved in what was going on he took his hit like a man he knew what happened he knew the game and he's doing his freaking time and he was like what 20 something years old when this happened and i know men 
double his age that he'd sit there crying like a little bitch. And that's why a lot of these people cut the deal. And, you know, it, it's always, you can tell who the fake people are, man. They're the big talkers. Uh, but when it comes down to paying the piper, man, for the game that you were playing, and you can't take the time, it, it's sad state of affairs nowadays, man. It's just a whole different generation, I believe, in the way they were thinking. And I gotta blame my generation for not teaching them right, man. At least I taught my kids right uh, in regards to that. Hey, if you're gonna play the game, man, play the freaking game and if it goes down, it goes down. You know, take your hit. And I guess other people don't teach like that, man. That uh, ratting ain't uh, honorable. There, you know what? Loyalty and honor, there used to be a lot of it, but not so much nowadays. Especially when it hits you in the face when you have a fat governor get up there and actually tell people to start narking on each other. Basically what they're trying to do is turn us against each other. And it's really disheartening to see people don't understand that's what's going on. It's become such a PC type of deal in this country now. It's actually pretty sickening. But leave your comments. Let me know what you think on this. Uh, we're going to go into the uh, Hells Angels story. We actually got two, I guess. Uh, the Bronx headquarter was raided uh, today. It's going down deep over on the East Coast, man. Uh, We'll see what's going to happen out of it. I'll give you the story. You guys make your uh, own decisions what you think that's going to happen. Uh, it's not going to be good for uh, a lot of motorcycle clubs because, you know, on one hand, everybody's trying to fight the motorcycle profiling. On the other, there's a few people that get out there and just ruin it for the whole damn bunch. So let's get to the biker news for today then we'll go into my final thoughts on the story so let's get this show on the road the story i was actually the most uh interested in right now and then i talked about it at uh in my opening this from sharon would you like a side of glitter with that burger man i need to do this i really do i need to get a freaking strip club going like this uh thanks to covid19 houston is home to texas's first drive through strip club by brandon clements there you go there's the honeys the oh old man they ain't that bad looking too you know you usually have a lot of strippers that are like fugly man you know they homely look in some of these strippers man it like, ain't it like in the bag in the day when they looking good but you know these look good man you know you got the low-end strip clubs and you got your high-end strip clubs uh most of the time it's the low ends that you get <laughs> anyway this is actually vivid gentlemen's club again if you're on the radio you know you got to come over and check it out on the video uh section vivid gentlemen's club at 20 here's the address if you're in texas guy go over there say i sent you 2618 Winrock Boulevard has become Texas' first drive-in. If you're a fan of exotic dancers and eating in your car, then Vivid Gentlemen's Club is probably your kind of pandemic paradise. You guys owe me for giving you props, man. Uh, the struggling Houston Bay Strip Club now has a drive through uh, And what's interesting about this story is Monday I'm going to be doing COVID-19 from a biker's perspective, and uh, the guy that I got uh, answers to some of my questions from uh, actually talks about the strip club industry. Yep, it's Burger King, only there's dancing involved. Black metal barricades separate the dancers from the cars and dollar bills litter the asphalt between the white siding of the tent walls. The purplish, purplish blue lighting casts a familiar to club goers anyway. Obedience over the scene, but obvious reminders of the pandemic remain. Some of the performers are in masks. Well, you know, you got to keep them, honey, safe. You got to keep them safe. Uh, this might seem like a gimmick, but it's serious business for ever since Governor Abbott issued an executive order directing all bars and restaurants to shut down way back in March. And that COVID 19, it's really going now, man. It's really spiking out there. 
and hopefully they don't shut my gym down again. I hate that. Uh, then you got to go prison style workout. I love my weights, man. Anyway, hundreds of thousands of bartenders, servers, and entertainers have been out of work, including the staff at Vivid Gentlemen's Club. You know, you got to keep them girls working because sometimes, you know, they might go to a street corner. It's not healthy for them. You know, you politicians got to start thinking about the ladies. Just saying. While restaurants are now allowed to operate at 50% capacity and bars are currently shut down with the option of to-go sales. Who wants to go to a bar to go sales? You know, I know, you know, they got some good burgers and stuff, but I don't know. Strict club, you know, you need curbside pickup, man. Get into that uh, delivery business for Alki Hall. Uh, strip clubs fall in a gray area between bars and restaurants, depending on the business and an effort. You should go juice bar, man. Just go juice bar during this stuff and you'll act like a restaurant. Uh, in an effort dedicated to support their staff, Vivid Gentlemen's Club decided to take their shot at the drive through experience by becoming Texas's first drive through strip club. Now, with this being in the news, you watch, you know, because they're, they're a little religious down in Texas, man. Uh, Texas is, uh, you know, is a little bit of the Bible Belt, but uh, we'll see how this goes over with them. I'm assuming every red-blooded American is familiar with the drive through experience. You order your food, you wait in line, you receive said food, and you move on with your life. Vivid has managed to replicate this experience with a few notable differences. The menu is definitely recognizable to anyone that has visited a strip club, nachos, burgers, chicken. See, the strip clubs I've been to, man, they got some good stuff, man. Uh, authentic Italian pizza. I, uh, I don't want to hear about pizza from Texas, okay? The only legitimate pizza in this country is from Chicago, and that goes for hot dogs as well. You don't, uh, you know, you know New Yorkers man your pizza ain't nothing compared to shy town your hot dogs ain't you know you, your pastrami sandwiches are pretty good though i gotta give you guys that uh alcohol also makes an appearance and customers can pick up a six pack so yes if you're in the houston area would you guys please go to vivid gentlemen's club go check out the honeys get a picture with them send them in i'll put them on the air <laughs> oh, the sad state of affairs this covid i don't think we're ever gonna go back to normal life what do you guys think uh, now, our main story everybody's been uh, talking about around the scene right now, uh, and it's actually escalating uh, today, but uh, yesterday, it won't get you guys caught up. Hells Angels uh, members arrested for allegedly killing leader of a Brox biker gang, and that was the Pagans, by Larry Salona and Craig McCarthy out of the New York Post. So this is coming straight from uh, New York. Uh, and it starts out, and hopefully this ain't going to be, uh, you know, come to fruition, but, you know, something like this I can see going. Uh, now there will be hell to pay. It might just go, man. Uh, cops have arrested two Hells Angels members and another biker gang, tough, sus uh, tough suspected in the assassination, and basically that's what it was, of a rival uh, Pagan's Motorcycle Club leader, Francisco Rosado, uh, 51, was shot dead by a pair of masked gunmen on Holland Avenue near Mace Avenue and in the Allerton uh, section of the Bronx around 3.20 p.m. on uh, May 2nd, a little over a couple months ago. Uh, police sources said... The two men taken into custody were high-ranking members of the Hells Angels who escalated a turf beef after the rival gang tried to move into the Bronx. You know, this, I believe, was from the 3rd Street crew. So, Hells Angels Hancho Frank uh, Tatelia, 58, and club member Sion Thongworth, uh, 29, were charged with murder, criminal weapons possession, and manslaughter. Anthony uh, DeStefano, 27, a reported member of the Sa Satan Soldiers biker gang, was hit with the same charges in uh, relation to the slaying, so two of Hell's Angels and the Satan Soldiers. The exact roles they played in the killing are unclear. Rosado, the leader of the Bronx chapter of the Pagans Motorcycle Club, was shot once in the head in the chest and died at the scene. 
Uh, the triggerman took off in a blue Cherokee uh, with stolen plates, cops said. The Hells Angels is based up and down the East Coast with more than 1,000 members and have been connected to drugs, tattoo parlors. I mean, why you got to put tattoo parlors in there, man? Strip clubs and junkyards, uh, they're waiting near a Raymond in Bronx criminal court. Uh, so this has escalated really freaking quick. I know there was a drive-by shooting on their Bronx clubhouse, and then this. A sad state of affairs, man. Now, let's talk about what happened the day it was at about 12, 12 p.m. Uh, again, this is the New York Daily News. Hells Angels Bronx headquarters are is it's being searched as cops pro murder of a rival gang member, the officials say, by Thomas Tracy. There's the uh, Bronx headquarters right there. Uh, the Hells Angels new Bronx headquarters was searched and two other men were arrested as police put the final touches on the, their probe into the murder of a rival motorcycle gang member, prosecutors said Thursday. Uh... Cops executed a search warrant of the Hells Angels' new home on Long Street Avenue in Throg's Neck on July 15th. And you can remember when they first moved in there, there was all kinds of worries from uh, the neighborhood because, you know, the shooting happened. And now I think everybody's going to be on edge because, you know, there was a high-ranking uh, guy, and I'm talking from gang experience. I'm not talking from club experience and stuff. What they do is what they do. But, you know, it's an ever, you know, lasting and never-ending type of deal in the the crews, man. You hit a freaking, uh, you know, high-ranker, man. Uh, you know, hell's coming down on you. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in this. And uh they were worried when they moved in. You know, let's see if the worries uh, pan out. Uh, cops executed uh, a search warrant of the Hells Angels' new home on Long Street again. Uh, they found a 25 caliber semi-automatic. Who, you know what, with the 25s and the 22s, man. 25s and 22s, you got to, like, be up on somebody to do any damn damage, man. You either go with 38s or 45s. That's, you know, just, you know what, that's what I hear in the movies. Anyway, uh, in the drawer of a nightstand in a back bedroom, a shotgun was also uh, found in a room. Now, you know, a sawed-off shotgun, that's going to, you know, ruin your day. Uh, Danielle Canal is 68 who was living at the motorcycle club headquarters was arrested for weapons possessions after the firearms were found the search took place as investigators zeroed in on three hell's angels members they believe assassinated now like you've seen in the previous article it was two and a satan soldier see this is one thing when it comes to uh pop-up clubs Everybody considers them like a hell's angel or a pagan or something like they think they're a one percenter club. They, and it's this is the perfect example right here. Uh, uh, let's see here. They believe assassinated 50 year uh, one year old. And by the way, our thoughts go out to the family Francisco Rosado, the president of the Pagan's Motorcycle Club's Bronx chapter in a parking lot near the Holland Avenue building where he worked as a super. Uh, Frank Luce Cannon, Tatalo 58, Anthony DeStefano, uh, then it gives the ages. A lot of these guys are young. Uh, they were arrested in the killing. The three were charged with murder, manslaughter, and gun. We talked about that. Uh, prosecutors hit uh, Tatali with additional gun charges after cops found a load. Well, there you go, a 38 cal uh, revolver. That is my favorite around, man, a 38 special. A uh, 12 gauge uh, and an air rifle. I guess air rifles are legal now. In a bla uh, black storage locker in a work uh, shop at his home on Hollywood Avenue. Uh, upstairs tenant 30 year old Jesse Burke was also arrested for weapons possession after a loaded 9mm caliber pistol and two magazines were found sitting on his kitchen counter. You're supposed to be hiding that crap, man. Burke and Canales were both released without bail following brief arraignments. Prosecutors said the Hells Angels members were uh, the masked men caught on disturbing video jumping out of the thing. Uh, there's a picture of, uh, Francisco Rosado right there. 
uh, the leader of the Bronx, and uh, you know, then they go into the heavily tattooed Rosado as the head of the Pagans. The club has been deemed an outlaw motorcycle gang by federal authorities, and several of its members have been linked to drug dealing, violence, and death. Uh, then it goes into uh, his uh, what's it called? His wife's reaction and all that stuff. But let's go more into the final thoughts on that stuff at the end of the video and this segment. Now let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. We actually got two of them and a pretty funny one after the Wall of Shames. Uh, Cuyahoga County Jail Officer Arrested for Attempted Robbery. Yes, and we just got done with the story where federal authorities say, well, they're a criminal gang. Well, you know, you got to look at your own, too, don't you? Uh, uh, and this one from Brooklyn. 40-year-old Ryan Hardware, uh, Hardwood has worked for the Cuyahoga County uh, since 2005. He faces uh, attempted robbery charges. Dude looks like he's fucking... He was crying. You could tell he was crying. <laughs> WKYC staff uh, writes this. Uh, he was trying to rob a 21-year-old man near the area of Ridge Road and Memphis Avenue around 4.30 a.m. He pointed what turned out to be a BB gun at the victim and was later arrested and charged with attempted robbery. Really, a BB gun? People nowadays give freaking robbers a bad name. Hardwood was arraigned on Monday at Parma Municipal Court and posted bond. Police in Brooklyn say the matter is still under investigation. According to the Cuyahoga County spokesman, Mary Louise Manigan, he's worked for the county since 2005. You are now in the wall of shame, you crier. You shouldn't have done it if you couldn't take the, you know, the consequences. Anyway, let's go to another one that Corey sent us, uh, the Selena Journal. Uh, Selena police officer has been arrested for driving under the influence after an ex uh, accident Sunday morning. Uh, about 3.40 in the morning, uh, Anthony Roman, you are now also with your buddy in the wall of shame, was driving his 20... Uh, 11 Dodge Ram 1500 pickup northbound on Broadway approaching 9th Street when an on-duty police officer observed the pickup traveling at a high rate of speed and failing to stop at the red light. Uh, man. He proceeded eastbound. Uh, he then struck the north uh, curve of Pacific, a power pole, and the south uh, of Dell's Automotive. So he ran into a freaking building. So yes, you drunk driver, and I hate drunk drivers, dude. They, like I said, they always seem to freaking uh, hurt everybody else and not themselves. Anthony Roman, or Roman, whatever you want to call yourself. If you're in the wall of shame. Now let's go to this funny story here, man. This is funny motorcyclists to wear your protective gear 63 bikers have already died this year with 23 fatalities funny. in denver alone today cdot painted their message for bikers on the streets they say the human cheese grater it's is what can grater. happen if you don't wear a helmet about 75 percent of motorcycle fatalities are rider related the grater is a reminder to get proper training wear protective gear and follow the rules of the road one motorcyclist we spoke with today said he was riding and hit a rock. His bike flipped and he broke his leg, but his helmet saved his life. If I did not have my helmet on, I do not know if I'd be standing here today talking to you. I am so thankful I had it on. Motorcycle deaths are up 13% this year, and that's, that's even lot. with people staying at home more because... But that's interesting, you know, they paint a cheese grater, and, you know, they kind of got a point, man. You, you go on that road rash trip, man, it's like you're a human cheese grater, just saying. <laughs> okay, my final thoughts. Yes, every time we go into my final thoughts, I always say, don't forget to go visit us on Spotify and iTunes, man. Take us with you to work and in the car or on the bike. Uh... This stuff on the East Coast, uh, just coming from an op-ed type of view, uh, it's going to be bringing a lot of heat down on everybody. But, of course, that's what happens when these kind of things happen. Uh, then, you know, you get the argument from people, well, they're not a motorcycle gang, they're a motorcycle club. 
Well, and then I always have to come back and say, well, if you do gang stuff, then, uh, you know, that's what it is. You know, something like this is an assassination of a chapter president. And when it comes to street law, man, you got to hit back, you know. It's just going to keep going and going and going. And, yes, it's going to affect uh, motorcycle club profiling. It's going to affect how cops see bikers. And, you know, the, in these times in America where it's going all crazy and stuff, it could get worse. That's what, you know. It is. Uh, again, I don't get into club politics. I'm not into that stuff. But uh, when you see it in the news, you got you form your opinion of what's going to go on. And, and, you know, let me know what your opinion is. It's not like, you know, we're trying to keep on. It, it's just like that question that was asked. Well, why are you putting, uh, you know, other people's business out there? Well, for one, like I said in the segment, it's a public domain. It's not me doing it. It's the damn New York Times doing it or the you know, New York Post, and it's the people that were involved that did it. It ain't me. You know, I'm just bringing the news to people and giving an opinion of what I think about the story. You know, it's not me doing it. So, you know, I don't know how many times I got to tell you, you schlucks that keep on complaining about uh, us doing that. That's our platform is Biker News. But, you know, we got an opinion too. And one of the things that a lot of people are going to put is why can't we just get along or why can't clubs just work together to m go against the feds and the first thing I always say is well you're not part of the club <laughs> that's club politics and these beefs have been going back for over 40 freaking 50 60 years sometimes and uh, you know stuff like this it's not forgivable if you ask me you know how would you think if uh you know one of your family members were gunned down what's the first reaction that you're gonna have to this you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, for those that are going to go and say, well, why can't everybody work together? You know, this is real life, man. This is the street. That's the way it's always been and is always going to be. It's kind of like the underworld when it comes to, uh, you know, a lot of this type of stuff. And if you're not in the underworld, you don't get how it runs. You know, it's just being point blank. So, you know, we're going to be monitoring uh, what's going on with this case. I'm sure there's going to be a tons of info coming out on this. And then you got the trials and all that stuff. And we'll see if anything goes down like that. But uh, what did you guys think about the strip club ideal, man? I really like that story, man. That is pretty freaking cool. But it is sad that in these times, a lot of businesses are forced to uh, the scrounge and to, you know, change their business models around because of what's coming down from the government i get it i see it the reason why that the government don't want you know this to spread but then i had a question i think i asked somebody this earlier today is h1n1 was just as bad a lot of cases it was spreading everywhere but nobody was locked down over it now, isn't this, and maybe one of you guys who know better than me, isn't this COVID-19 the same, it's in the same family as far as I know with the H1N1, so why wasn't all this happening in the day done back then? You know, I got my personal thoughts, you know, I think it's politics and stuff. It was just amazing how we had the best economy in the world, then all of a sudden it's an election year, you know, maybe call me a conspiracy theory uh, but I think uh, it was released. That's just my thoughts on that. Let me know yours. But if you're in Houston, make sure you go out there and support them, man. That looks like it'd be fun. And if you do, send me some pictures, like I said. Uh, again, uh, the wall of shame. Like I always say about the wall of shame, it's like, you know, for whatever you try to blame them for, the one percenters or other motorcycle clubs we can find stuff just on you too uh maybe the wall of shame could help uh change the way you guys do business it was funny uh yesterday's uh thing you know i talked about uh the cops and stuff well you know you really didn't answer the qu what 
listen to the damn segment, you freak. Hooked on phonics does not work for everybody, man. Uh, it's just funny how ignorant people really are. You know, watch all my programs. You'll see how I feel about Leo. Uh, and then the cre- uh, the cheese grater uh, story, that is pretty, you know, that, that was pretty uh, good ideal, man, because uh, Road Rash sucks. <laughs> Trust me, it sucks. So, but I still believe that helmets are a personal choice and they shouldn't be given to a, a you know an edict from the government of what we should be wearing so but that is the show for today the news i will make sure to try to keep you up on the stories if there's anything else that comes down out of the bronx as always man i really appreciate you guys supporting the show with that i'll talk to you later I man talk Bamboos. to you adios ciao Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!